So I've been to Red Rocks to see Panic in 97 and 98. And then I moved to Colorado in 2004 and then went, went to, went to Red Rocks, you know, as a tourist park goer, whatever, you know, <laughs> um, ran up and down the steps and then walked into that museum. Oh, right. I took my, my parents were there to visit. So I took them like, we got to go to Red Rocks, you know? And so I took them down there and, um, yeah, there was like, I guess, a, kind of a museum, you know, um, a gallery of photos. I haven't been there in, in a while, but um, it was it was like just walking through, you know, real history. And um, I think it's cool when the venue itself has a, you know, has a has a sense of their own history and how they are part of, you know, the music world and, and it. It's just very interesting. It's it's I don't know. There's not a lot of venues who can kind of say that, um, you know, certainly there's a handful of everyone's favorites, but they're just like just like Madison Square Garden and some of these others. They're just totally, you know, woven into, you know, music history completely, um, especially live music history and especially with so many of the bands that we we really like. Absolutely. Yeah. And it seems like almost like a rite of passage for bands, like when they first played Red Rocks or if they play Red Rocks at all, it's like, you know, achieving this major milestone, you know, for sure. And I think like, you know, it's kind of funny because I'm not necessarily a Goose fan at all, but I'm such a fan of their ascent, you know, and I'm <laughs> like, I love watching this and I loved seeing, you know, them play do that thing with Trey, that tour, and then just being guested everywhere and just being showcased and that the, but like, it, it, it's just very cool. And so when they played Red Rocks, I think last year was the first time they did it. Um, you know, I remember somebody shared somewhere on social, a tweet or a post from one of the Goose Band members sisters. And it was like, my brother's playing Red Rocks. I can't believe this, you know? <laughs> and like, I kind of felt like in that, like with her, I'm like, this is just too cool, you know, good for them. Um, but yeah, it is. It's absolutely like a rite of passage. It's one of those venues, like the Warfield, the Greek, you know, all that you like. It's cool watching these bands graduate up these rooms, you know, up these venues. And um Hopefully, hopefully we still have these independent venues, you know, going forward. And that's, I, I mean, that's, I think, another big part of the whole, the whole uh, equation here is that there's something happening, you know, with, with venues in general and, and advertising and corporate interests and tax incentives on a bigger scale to, manipulate funds to you know build and tear down the, some of these venues and they're they're losing their history or there there's no history at all um so again like having these artists and these venues that are of 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 value is um uh, you know it's kind of defining so yeah i like i think on the site on venue llama is another avenue to pursue is is the historic you know show, showcasing some of the historic aspects of 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 the bigger venues or the, you know, the ones we all, we all like and hope are going to be around forever.